Hello everyone, you are watching Physio Classroom channel and in this second video of the CIMT series, we are going to learn about the learned non-use. We are going to learn what is learned non-use and how does it develops in a stroke patient. We will also cover how learned non-use can actually delay and affect the functional recovery of the weaker arm in a hemiplegic patient. Finally, we will also be explaining what actually happens in the brain of the patient when learn non-use is developed and how CIMT training program can reverse the effects of the learn non-use. So let's get started. Now let's first understand what is learn non-use and how does it develops. Now whenever an individual suffers from a neurological insult to the brain such as stroke which results in one side becoming weaker than the other then immediately following such episode the patient is going to try and make several attempts to move the weaker side upper limb but every such attempt when results in a failure this results in a negative feedback to the patient now as a result the patient starts making compensatory changes and utilizes the stronger side upper limb to carry out day-to-day activities now this compensatory behavioral adaptation and learning not to use the weaker side and instead compensate by using the stronger side is called as learned non-use that is the patient learns over the initial period following stroke not to use the weaker side upper limb because of the repeated failure and frustration now what is important to be noted here is that this behavioral adaptation and habit of using the stronger side to carry out the daily activities can actually mask the recovery of the weaker side upper limb. Now this simply means that over a period of time the patient actually develops the potential to move and utilize the weaker side for carrying out the daily tasks. But since the patient has developed this learning behavior of not to use the weaker side he does not make any attempts to utilize the weaker side for carrying out the daily activities and in this manner the learned non-use can actually significantly delay and hamper the good functional recovery for the weaker side upper limb. Now the way I explain this to my postgraduate students to make them understand easily how learned non-use develops and what is masking of the recovery for the weaker side upper limb is as follows. Now the first thing to understand is what actually happens in the brain of the patient immediately after stroke. Now as a result of this neurological insult there is development of brain edema which can be of three types. There can be vasogenic or vascular edema, there can be the cellular or the cytotoxic edema and interstitial edema. Now because of this there is cell death and reduced cellular activity. And as a result of this, there is neurogenic shock and onset of flaccidity on the weaker side. During this period, any attempt that is made by the patient results in failure and therefore the patient thinks that he cannot successfully utilize to move the weaker side. Compensatory behavior sets in and patient starts performing daily activities with the stronger side. Now what is again important to be understood here by the physiotherapy students is that after four to five days following stroke this brain edema starts resolving and as a result there is again increase in the cellular activity and in the following week the penumbra area also starts getting activated and as a result the patient actually develops potential to have movements in the weaker side but because during the initial days patient learned not to use it there is masking of the recovery so masking of recovery is that because of resolution of edema and because of activation of the penumbra area the brain which was earlier not able to send discharges to the weaker side can actually now do so but the patient is voluntarily not trying to utilize these electrical discharges to move the weaker side upper limb. Now also along with the resolution of edema and the activation of the penumbra area, after three to four week period, 
there is also one more mechanism that needs to be understood here by the physiotherapy students that results in the functional recovery of the weaker side which is neural plasticity now neural plasticity takes place through various mechanisms such as neuronal sprouting activation of the redundant or passive pathways and formation of new synapses now knowing about these three steps of neurological recovery that is resolution of edema activation of penumbra area and neural plasticity the therapist can easily understand what masking of recovery is and the same needs to be explained to the patient to keep them motivated and facilitate the repeated attempts to utilize the weaker arm functionally so therefore learned non-use can also be described as a condition in which there is a failure on the part of the patient to utilize the weaker side to carry out day-to-day -day activities although they have the potential to use it now another important information regarding the learned non-use is that learned non-use can develop either suddenly or rapidly such as in acute stroke or learned non-use can also develop over a period of time gradually such as in conditions like multiple sclerosis incomplete spinal cord injuries cerebral palsy and chronic strokes so now let's discuss what actually happens in the brain of a stroke patient after the development of the learned non-use now as a result because of this tendency not to use the weaker side upper limb it has been shown through researches and transcranial magnetic stimulation that the cortical territory representing the weaker side upper limb and hand has shown to be shrinking and reducing in its size now this brings us to address the last question of this second video of cimt series which is how can cimt actually reverse these effects of learned non-use and promote the functional recovery in the weaker side upper limb now cimt training does this by incorporating two important steps step one send the stronger arm on a holiday by constraining it now once we have the stronger arm constrained it removes all possibilities to use it automatically for carrying out day-to-day -day activities and therefore all the brain's attention is now going to get diverted and directed towards the weaker side step two put the weaker arm on a intensive training program which we call it as a boot camp or a crash course now during this intensive training program depending on the patient's level of functional recovery and potential patient is given set of exercises that are intended to improve the voluntary control of the weaker side this intensive training program is again broken down into two important steps one is supervised training which is done under the supervision of the therapist and another one is the self-training which is done along with the family members to carry out different ADL or functional tasks related to daily activities now as a result of these two steps it has been shown through numerous researches that there is a total change in the environment in which the patient carries out the day-to-day -day task and as a result it drives and facilitates the neural plasticity to have a good functional recovery for the weaker side upper limb in our upcoming videos we will also be describing in detail how to design invent plan execute these intensive training programs for the stroke and other neurological patients so i sincerely hope that the information shared in this video is going to be helpful for the physiotherapy students to understand the concept of learn non-use and its development and also how cimt training reverses the effects of learned non-use in our third video of the cimt series we will be covering the important cimt screening steps and tests that are needed to be performed by the physical therapist on stroke and other neurological patients to determine whether they can actually be selected for the cimt training program so see you all in our next video till then keep learning keep sharing and stay connected